Um, you got to give Greensboro an awful lot of credit for the way they play. And by that, I mean they force you sideline with their defense. Their big guys help, uh, do a great job. And then at the offensive end, they set more ball screens than we do. And they do a great job of going then high-low or hitting the elbow and skipping a pass out. And some of those three-point shooters that they have really stretch your defense. So at halftime, it's a one-point game. And uh, you know we need a, a much better second half at both ends. And we got it. Everybody played extremely well. I thought Harlan Beverly was a huge key tonight. He and Bensley Joseph, I think, hit back-to-back -back threes during that one stretch. It was close. And we extended the lead into double figures then and kind of were able to keep it around 9, 10, 11 for the rest of the game. Questions? Cutting those turnovers in the second half, how you had 10 in the first, how, how crucial was Yeah, I think when you play against a team that you don't practice against, we don't play that kind of defense. We pressure, but we don't force sideline. We force middle. So it's so unique for us, for our players, it takes time for them to adjust. And I thought we did towards the end of the half. And again, my offensive coordinator, Bill Courtney, did a great job of keeping me uh, focused on what he thought was working. So we went right to it to start the second half. We wanted to get Nigel Pack going, and he did. He came out, he was very aggressive, made several shots early. And then, of course, late, we always go to Isaiah, and he hit that huge three. Very late in the game, he made a couple of free throws and uh, made some very good defensive stops. Coach, how was UNC Greensboro def um, defensively uh, different than Lafayette, and how do you think the team adjusted? Well, Lafayette packs in the paint. They don't put a lot of pressure on the ball, so you can get a lot of threes that way. Tonight, they force sideline and put a lot of pressure on you to go to the basket. But when you go to the basket, there's a big guy waiting for you. So you have to pass. That's how we ended up with 19 assists. We kicked it out and got a, a three. Coach, 13 threes for your team tonight. Where do you think your team is in terms of like a ceiling? Where tonight? What's our? What's your ceiling? Offense? Ceiling? Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, you know, we're not going to know that for a long time. I mean, one of the things we did tonight that that the the, the players know, the uh, two things I don't like are fouls, which we fouled them way too much and turnovers in the first half we had way too many five in the second half is fine five or six a half that that's good ball control but when we start to get up into you know 12 14 15 that that that's a real problem because almost all of our turnovers do you see the points of turnovers at halftime do you see it? it was 15. so our offense gave them 15 points out of their 34, is that what they had? What did they have at the half, 34? So think about it. You know, a third of their points, more than a third, came from our mistakes on offense. Coach, the team had 19 assists. I think you guys averaged around 14 a game last season. I guess what are your early impressions of your team's ball movement so far this season? Yeah, I think we're sharing the ball very well. That's, that's one of the things we stress every day in practice. And I think, you know, Nigel and Isaiah, I've really developed good chemistry. We're trying to get, get Wooga in that category. Tonight, uh, Harlan Beverly had nice chemistry with them. And uh, that's, that's what we need. we need. We need our bench to come through. Like Anthony Walker had a great steal and a dunk. He had a big time rebound. Uh, and he, he deflected several passes that forced them to start over. So, you know, those things don't go into the stat sheet, but the coaches recognize it, and I hope he does, because he did a great job. Then I also want to ask about Jordan Miller and how his role in offense has kind of changed from what it was last season to what it is this year. Yeah, he can do everything. He can handle the ball. He can shoot the three. The one thing we're not getting for him, because of the way people are defending him, it was we're not getting him those drives. He, he tried a couple of times early, lost the handle on one, uh, missed the, one of the shots, but... As we play and, and go further along, he'll get, he'll be able to do a lot of things because he's like a jack of all trades. What can you say about Norshad and Mir games today, tonight? Uh, Norshad, <laughs> for him, he needs to understand how important he is to stay out on the on the court, and that means stay out of foul trouble. All right? When he gets in foul trouble, 
uh, we lose our defensive rebounding presence inside because he's a great rebounder. How many did he have tonight? 11 rebounds. All right. So those are very, very important rebounds because it means either, one, he got a defensive rebound, that means we got to stop, or an offensive rebound, which maybe we get a second shot. Either he shoots it or throws it to a teammate for a shot. But he's a tremendous rebounder. His, his fouls come from he hasn't played at this level where his defensive concentration has to be the whole possession. You know, he has so much physical talent, he thinks I can wait till the guy catches the ball, then I can guard him. And you can't do that now. You've got to try to be prepared not to let him catch it. Well, I told him before the game that his main – well, I actually have told him in practice and on the phone and in text message, his game is, is really to defend and rebound and then just share the ball on offense. And in, in years past, he played a lot at the point. Now he's back to his normal wing position where you get three-point shots, right? Like like Isaiah gets, like Nigel gets, like like uh, Bensley gets. When you when you get those, and tonight he he cashed in, made a big one at the end of the first half, and then he made two more in the second half. 